Hello friends, this is lesson number 53 in the series of literary criticism and theories. And in this lesson, we shall discuss Gerard Jennett. Okay, he is a minor writer related to structuralism, but we have a concept given by him and we shall quickly go through that. So, first, he is a French theorist and the famous work by him, the two we have, Narrative Discourse an essay in method the full title narrative discourse colon an essay in method the next is structuralism and literary criticism one thing you should remember all these french writers or the writers of non-english language they first wrote the things in their own language and then these works were later translated into english so about uh, the concept given by him we have the concept of transtextuality mostly you have heard this term intertextual or intertextuality and he has given this term transtextuality so first we take this and then we discuss intertextuality and others so according to him when a text is relating to the other text or the works that could be the part of this work the same in which it is written or could be the other that is transtextuality and sometimes this relation can be obvious could easily be seen or sometimes this is concealed may not be easily visible we have different kinds of the transtextuality according to him the first is intertextuality means where one work is having reference to the other works one text is having some relation to the other text that is intertextuality from one book to another then we have paratextuality paratextuality now as the title suggests we can easily understand that the connection or the relation is there in the same book from one para to another could be like this from one chapter to the another chapter or maybe in the title in the epigraph in the preface but in the same book now in paratextuality we have two categories the first is peritext or paratext here the references are made to the part of the same book could be like preface captions chapters titles or other notes that are contained in the same books and the next is epitext here epitext is something apart from that book that could be interviews reviews or the additional notes made about that work or the other letters appendix which are written outside the main text one thing you can notice that in both these intertextuality and paratextuality there could be the possibility of the involvement of the different writer as one text is making reference to the other text one book is making reference to the other book there could be the two different writers or could be the same writer of the both books and in the paratextuality as well if the whole book is written by the same author then it's fine there may be the involvement of the more than one author could be possible even the reviews or the interviews or the other letters could be written by the other authors so every possibility and one thing more you may have noticed when you choose a book to read then paratextuality help us to go deep into the text because where something is written somewhere and then to go deeper into the meaning you read different sort of things references and interviews reviews or whatever the analysis so paratextuality helps us and further we can add that uh, paratextuality helps us to gain the deeper meaning of the text and the next is meta textuality meta textuality what is meta text meta text is text about text suppose you write a book and then you write another book about the book you have written previously and in that work you write that how to read that book what are the significant things about that book so you are not additionally writing anything new but you are telling us more about the already written what is already written so that is meta text from there we have the concept of meta textuality remember it is not a reference 
it is not intertextuality it is something that you are writing fully dedicated to the previous text like in paratextuality or in intertextuality there could be one part that has a relation to the given text but when we have metatextuality in that the whole text is oriented on the given text now after this we have hypertextuality hyper means having a link or a connection so with this we see the relationship between the two books it could be like a sequel prequel one famous work is there first that is hamlet by written by william shakespeare and in that we have the two characters guildenstern and rosencrantz so then we have in the 20th century a playwright and the name is tom stoppard and he has written a play rosencrantz and guildenstern's are dead actually what he did that he took these two characters from that play hamlet and wrote a story or a plot about them that has a full reference to hamlet other example could be like uh, jane eyre written by charlotte bront and then as a prequel to this work we have jean rice who has written white sargasso sea white sargasso sea so similar like uh, king lear written by william shakespeare and then we have another writer edward bond and he has written lear it was written in the year 1971 and it is a three act play so that is hypertextuality where we see clearly a relationship between the two distinctive works and the last one we have that is architectuality it refers to the text having relationship between them on the basis of their genre when we have the two different works and they are sharing the same genre they are belonging to the same category both are gothic novels or both are romantic comedies or both are tragedies that is architectuality so that is all about uh, the intertextuality or the transtextuality actually the main concept is transtextuality so gerard janet a french thinker literary structuralist theorist he has written a work structuralism and literary criticism and narrative discourse so in that there we have the concept of transtextuality and in that we have five types of the textuality intertextuality paratextuality and then we have metatextuality hypertextuality and the last one is architectuality so that's it for this lesson and by this lesson i think we have covered up all the important writers of the structuralism so that's it for this lesson and as i feel that this is our last lesson on structuralism so by the next lesson we shall start another topic so thanks a lot for watching this lesson and have a great day